Today's show is pre recorded. Uh-huh. I sure will. Well, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Yeah, man. Boy, God has been good to me. Man, I can't really count it all. You can't either. You know, it's all in perspective. You really can't count all that God has done for you. If you look at every little thing, it's unbelievable the things he's done for us. How many times, you know, we, we got through something without even talking to him about it. He just, he just blessed us with it. How, how many? You know, it's just it's, it's so much that the fact that you wake up in the morning, the fact that you still have a place to stay, the fact that you know, may be struggling out here, but guess what? You, you still going to work. You, you know, you living check to check, but, but you're making it all. You got all the plates spinning, you know. It's hard. You got a lot of plates spinning, but you keep them up there somewhere. Every now and then, one break, but he put two more back up there that look a little bit better, and you got to get to spending them. So it all works. Um, and then you got a lot of people who uh, just can't seem to mentally put it together as to, uh, you know, why their life isn't in the position that they want it to be. We talk about this oftentimes, but I want to try another angle with you today. You know, maybe it's you. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's no external force that's at fault like you keep making the excuse to be. You know, so many people I hear, well, if this hadn't have done this, if he hadn't have done that, if she hadn't have done that, I would have been further along. I wasted all my time, my years with this man, and he did this, and I could have been here, and I could have been there. And, and this woman, she did this to me, and if she hadn't have done that, I could have been here and I could have been there. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's not really that external force that you keep making it out to be. See, I've done this to myself before. Once again, I'm talking to you about something I know about. I've done this to myself before. I've had the reason I wasn't where I wanted to be. I had it figured out as some external force. I had worked it out in my mind. Clearly, it wasn't me. Because if so-and-so, or if this hadn't happened, and if they hadn't have done this, I would have been further along up the road. That's what I was saying. But hold on, hold on, man. Boy, I learned a valuable lesson, man. See, if you don't ever let it go, it's going to be hard for you to go. If you don't ever let it go, 
it's going to be hard for you to go. I was listening to Bishop T.D. Jakes one day, and I heard him say, you can't drive your car if you're going to keep looking in the rearview mirror. You go outside and try that. Try to drive your car, but keep your eye in the rearview mirror. All you looking at is where you've been. All you looking at in that rearview mirror is where you passed or should have passed, something you should have moved on from. All you doing is looking in that rearview mirror at what happened back there. If you don't stop looking in the rearview mirror, you're going to crash your car over and over and over again. Or you got to slow it down so bad in order for you to keep looking in that rearview mirror. If you don't learn to let it go, it's going to be hard for you to go forward because you keep reviewing the past. The past is the past. And I know it's hard. Man, I watched a show and this lady said, well, I just can't ever forgive them for that. Well, guess what? Guess what? God may have already forgiven that person. That person may be extremely remorseful, could have gone to God and gotten forgiveness for it years ago. But you, you sit here and you keep hanging on to the back. I can't ever forgive that. Mm -mm. Then I heard Bishop Jakes come on the show one time and say something that really, really struck home. You keep drinking the poison, waiting on your enemy to die. (laughs) He said that, I just shook my head and went, wow. You drinking the poison, waiting on your enemy to die. Revenge is poison to you. You know, if, if, if hatred is poison to you, unforgivingness, when you won't forgive a person, that person could be going on with their life, made the right with God, don't know how you feeling, they skipping through life. Now, you make adjustments every time you see them, and it takes energy, man. It takes so much energy to hate. It takes so much energy not to forgive. To a, now they come in the room, you got to avoid them, stay over here. Um, oh, here they come now. You got to make a situation over here. They come into the house. It's family reunion. Uh Oh, here they come. Where they going to be in the basement? I'm going up here on the third floor. I want to go out here and get some barbecue. She out there at the barbecue stand. Oh, Lord, I don't want a barbecue. I just eat this taste salad. People, man, take themselves all out of position trying to make adjustments. When if you, it would simplify your life if you would let just let it go. Maybe you ain't where you need to be because of them external forces altogether. Maybe you're not where you need to be because of you. Because you won't let it go. You won't move forward. Look at this lady. Let's say you've been in a situation with a man. For years, it didn't work out for whatever the reason. It just didn't work out. I got I got what you say he did. I got what he did. I got he, I, I, all of that, yada, yada, yada. When you get through, did not God get you through it? Did not he allow you to survive it? I got you got some cuts on you. I got you been a little bit bruised. But did he not get you through it? So now that he's freed you from it. Now he done went on. He got a whole nother family over there somewhere. He, now, now he trying to make it right. Because maybe he learned the mistake he made. And now he trying to be a better man. He just trying to get it right now. But you sitting there holding on to it. You drinking the poison, waiting on your enemy to die. So now instead of you enjoying the blessing of finally being free from a situation that was not healthy for you, you create an even more unhealthy situation in your mind by hating, by having revengeful thoughts, by hoping he fall on his face. Maybe you even doing something to the other situation to make sure they struggle. Oh, man, you drinking poison, waiting on your enemy to die. Maybe you ain't where you ought to be in life, not because of your external forces, but maybe it's you. If you don't let it go, it's going to be hard for you to go. You can't keep driving your car looking in the rearview mirror. Come on, man. Forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. You're listening 
to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ride. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve Harvey's got his full team with him. Welcome to the ride. Y'all, good morning, Shirley Strawberry. Good morning. Happy Friday, Steve Harvey. Carla Pharrell. Hey, Steve Harvey. What's up, crew? Kill Spates. Morning, everybody. Morning, up. J. Anthony Brown. What's up, Steve Harvey? Thomas. <laughs> Thomas Miles. Thank you, sir. I can't sing <laughs> at all. <laughs> at all. Steve, please explain Jay's look today for our listeners. Um, Jay decided to come to work <laughs> as a it. Swiffer. <laughs> Let it go a out. Swiffer. Uh, <laughs> they came to work. Has a swiffer. Seen that commercial? He has a, a, <laughs> a, a, a visor on. This is not a visor. This is my hair. And behind it, his hair. hair is twisted. Uh, Long yesterday. twist. Uh-huh. Very age inappropriate. Mm. Very much so. And uh, <laughs> his hair look old. <laughs> And it's right? twisted. twisted. That's like when I see real old ass people with dreads. You mean you know. like, uh, like Snoop? <laughs> no, everybody quiet now. Huh? Everybody quiet. Everybody ain't nobody got everybody nothing quiet. to say now. Uh-uh. Huh? He uh, go hard sudden, on social media. Nah, nah, I done said something wrong. You yeah. brought it up, and I said like like Snoop. Yeah, I didn't say that because I don't want to be on his social media account. I don't want to be on it either, but you said old people with dreads and the dreads stop behind the head. I said, like Snoop. That's all I said. You keep saying it, too. You keep saying it. (laughs) I never noticed that. (laughs) Clean it up, Steve. I love it. Nah. Nah, you out there by yourself, Jay. (laughs) You You know how many times I've been out here by myself. (laughs) That's <laughs> where I belong. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm, sir, I wish I would. <laughs> another day. Sir, yeah, another I wish day. I would. Uh, <laughs> congratulations to the protesters that are keeping it peaceful. Yes. Uh, congratulations to the protesters who have participated in what seems to be a change. I've never seen these many officers get arrested. Congratulations. I've never seen these many perpetrators of crimes against black people get perpetrated. The uh, hillbillies down in uh, Br- Brunswick, the Georgia, yeah, the and the third one now. Mm-hmm. Yes. he's under yes. arrest. Yeah. And I've been reading the story that's coming out. I mean, man, I'm just yeah. It does feel different and look it different you, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve. Yeah, maybe change so. for the so. twenty. Maybe change so. Ain't like yeah, we, ain't like we don't need. <clears throat> I drive by Perimeter Mall every day because I go for a drive, right? Atlanta. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to stop and take a picture with this guy. This one white guy standing mm-hmm. on the medium in the middle of the road and he's got a sign up that says, Black Lives Do Matter. And I blow my horn at him every day. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stop if he's tomorrow. And I'm taking a picture with that man and posting it. Would you be driving, Steve, when you blow the horn? Okay. <laughs> <Be right there. laughs> standing with us. Be All right, right coming there. up 32 minutes after the hour. <laughs> The first of several uh, memorials to George Floyd uh, happened yesterday, and we'll talk about that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, yesterday was the first of four services to honor George Floyd. Floyd's family remembered George as a magnetic presence, right. regardless of who surrounded him, and a loving, kind man. His family said that George always would embrace people, and the family went on to say that George Floyd was a huggy, was a huge, was a huge, huge LeBron James fan. Several celebrities, uh, plus local and national uh, community leaders, attended the service to pay their respects, including T.I. and his wife, Tamika uh, Tiny, uh, Ludacris, Kevin Hurt, Will Packard, Tyrese, uh, Marseille Martin, um, Tiffany Haddish, uh, Attorney Benjamin Crump, and Re- Reverend Al Sharpton both gave inspiring remarks. Take a listen to Reverend Al Sharpton's eulogy. George Floyd's story has been the story of black folks. Because ever since 401 years ago, the reason we could never be who we wanted 
and dream to be in is you kept your knee on our neck. It's time for us to stand up in George's name and say, get your knee off our necks. We don't have a problem denouncing violence, Mr. Governor. We don't have a problem, Mr. Mayor, denouncing looting. But it seems like some in the criminal justice system have a problem looking at a tape and knowing there's probable cause, and it takes a long time for you to go and do what you see that you need to do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Come was, on, yeah, Reverend Al. Really really right. yeah, he really went was. back, man. Mm-hmm. He went he back did. to the old Al. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 400. Medallion wearing Al. That's where he went back to the medallion yeah. wearing Al. And he that mentioned the mayor. The mayor was yeah. there. Uh, the, governor the governor was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amy Klobuchar was there. Senator, Senator. Amy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of people uh, were well, there. People of course, Reverend how Jesse good Jackson. He can preach, man. Yeah, he really uh, exactly. No, he can preach. Yeah. Can yeah. preach, man. Yeah. He, yeah. he really knew can. how to have yeah. that beginning, See, middle, uh, and end, and bring it home. Look, man. getting mm-hmm. getting the four officers took some time, mm-hmm. but I, I want I, I think what was happening here, which doesn't happen in our case, please know that. Uh, I think what's happening here, I think, and even if they bought the charges when they bought the charges against the other three. Mm-hmm. They then upped the charges against him Derek because mm-hmm. I was interviewing Crump earlier today on the show that I was taping. He said that third degree manslaughter, I mean, yeah, third degree murder can get you, third degree murder can get you up to 20 25. years in prison yeah. or five years probation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why they were fighting so hard to get to second degree murder. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what happens in second degree murder, when you get convicted, you got to go do time. Mm -hmm. And so that happened. And then the other officers were bought in for abating. Aiding and abetting. Abating Abating and and abetting. abetting. Aiding and abetting. Mm -hmm. Aiding and abetting because Mm -hmm. they aided. Mm -hmm. And so he explained on this show I was doing how the pressure on the man's lungs from the weight of the other officers was crushing his windpipe. And then he bought all the material with the autopsy and everything. I think there's a very, very strong case here. And yeah, I, so I would I, I would be stunned. And it's I think cut and dry, dog. It's it, 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 it so yeah, cut and dry. Don't say that though. But yeah. we've we've yeah. seen yeah. cut and dry before. before. Yeah, we've been. Through oh, yeah. But I, I don't think they can come back with a, a, a an innocent verdict because the white peer pressure in the white community is a little bit turned up now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because see, when you have little white kids coming home from the protest, look mommy, they shot me in my stomach with a rubber bullet. That's never been had before. Mm -hmm. They're having these Mm -hmm. conversations because they pushing white girls down protesting. Oh yeah, I saw that. See, they they knocking white dudes over garbage Mm -hmm. cans. Mm -hmm. Now they got, now that for the first time they're seeing this and they're going, wait a minute, Mm -hmm. I had my hands up. My hands were up, this guy kept telling the police. Why'd you push me? My hands were up. Because they don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we done had our hands up and got our brains yeah. splattered That's across right. the sidewalk. Yeah. That's right. That's so right. that is different now. And I don't yeah. think that they'll be able to bring back a, a nothing but a guilty plea. Because if they know if they bring back an innocent plea, all these cities going back up in fire again. Reverend Al told a story about this um, little girl who tugged on his uh, jacket, his suit jacket. Mm-hmm. A little, he turned around, it was a little white girl. He said she couldn't have been more than about 11 years old. And he turned around and he looked, and she held up her fist and said, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> does, little girl. Uh, yes, it 11 years yeah. old. See, he yeah. said she couldn't have been more than that. So, uh. you know, I mean, and that's where this stuff has to be taught. It yeah. has to be taught in the home. You know, yes. yeah. anti-racism. Absolutely. It has to start there. Um, the next memorial service will be tomorrow in North Carolina, where George Floyd was born. And then finally, on Monday, there will be a service and a public viewing in Houston, uh, where Floyd grew up, and then a private service on Tuesday. Right. And that will be the end of I have a question. I know. Yeah. I, I'm, we, I mean, we're all glad that white people are participating. I mean, I know I am. But the question still remains, what took them so long to get involved? Hmm. What, what took so long? What, why did it take this long? Why did it take this long? Hey, man, do you why? know what I think it is? I have mm-hmm. a theory, Jay. Mm-hmm. I think it was COVID-19. 
I think instead of the world going about their busyness, they going on spring break, they at summer vacation, mm -hmm. they, they are at They're work, home. they doing a the happy home. hour. Right. COVID-19 had everybody in quarantine. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking for something to see. And guess what? This became brand new news. And for the first time, without the distractions of the world the way it's, it's normally song. run, it's they were forced to, to sit here and look at it and go, what? Wow. And then they all were true. sick of quarantine, so they wanted to mm -hmm. get out. So what became the thing to get out and go do? Let's go out and protest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell, we hell we can't go to the movie. Mm -hmm. We can't go eat. Well, we Let's can't go escape protest. It. We can't escape yeah. the and, news. And you, right. right, and you know they what? They saw um, the weed shops stayed open. Thank you. I can't with him. <laughs> That's what you coming up. I, coming sorry, up at the I'm top team, of the I'm hour. Team J. Go ahead. Jay. Coming up next, nephew Tommy's run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann with today's trending national news, and then in entertainment news, Kanye West has donated to the Floyd family. Right now, nephew in the building with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff? Parasite. Uh, uh, parasite. Uh, parasite. <laughs> there comes a time where there's some things that enter your body that you need to have removed, and that's Ew. where we are today. <laughs> you have parasites parasite. in one of your testicles. Let's go, cat dog. Oh, my. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a Brian. Brian. Yeah, yeah, this is he. Hey, Brian, this is Dr. Uh, Jacob. How are you doing today? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing good. I hear you, Dr. I'm doing good. Okay. Listen, you actually came in uh, maybe like two and a half weeks ago here to my office and got a physical for uh, for life insurance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Everything okay? Uh, Well, yeah, yeah. Everything's going to be pretty good. I, I'd like to see if I can get you to come in. And, um, I, I, you know, everything is going to be fine, but I got a small procedure we'd like to do to actually, uh, you know, right now you're not approved for your life insurance to do until this procedure is done. So if you don't mind coming in, we'd, li we'd like to get you uh, taken care of. When can I schedule you to come in? Like uh, maybe uh, tomorrow or the following day? Yeah, well, uh, what, what kind of procedure is it? Well, actually, I don't know if you've heard of it. This is an ochiostromy. Nah, I got something. What's what, what, oh, that's got, got something to do with my eyes? What, what, what's that? So it's got something to do with your what now? It's got something to do with my eyes. I ain't even heard it. What's, what's that? No, no. Ochiostromy has nothing to do with the eyes. No, nothing at all. We found a little bit of um, parasites in a particular area, and what we want to do is make sure we just remove it completely, and you'll be fine. You'll get your life insurance. You and your family will be great. So can I get you to come in tomorrow or maybe Thursday afternoon? That's fine. What, uh, what, what area I found the parasites in? Actually, one of your testicles has some parasites. So what we're going to do is what, what's called a ochiostromy, and ochiostromy is actually removing that testicle completely. And then everything gonna be fine. It's all confined, and we'll be able to remove it. You'll be on your way. You'll get your life insurance, and everything will be fine. Okay? Like I said, can I get can I can I get you to come in tomorrow? What what what, what the f you got to my, my testicle? Well, only one, only one, and it's not gonna take long. It's a thirty minute procedure, but we want to get you to come in tomorrow or the next day. Can we get you to? What, what day are you available? Listen, I just wanted for a routine visit. How, how I got to remove a test? Sir, you know what? Oftentimes when people come in for life insurance, these type of things happen. So we want to get you in and get it out as quickly as possible. Man, nah, man. I'm, I'm waiting for a routine physical, man. Y'all weren't supposed to be checking all this extra stuff, man. I get a parasite man, in my testicle. Y'all going to remove a testicle, man? I'm 25, man. My wife, man, ain't got no kids, man. We trying to build it. I got to remove a testicle? Let me say this to you, Brian. You're going to be completely fine. You'll be able to create children. You'll be able to live a normal life. You know, you'll just be, um, you won't have all of them, but you'll have enough to create children. You understand? That's, boy, that's, nah, man, I can't, nah, I ain't, ain't going, nah, I can't come in for that, nah. Sir, is there any way I can get you in tomorrow or tomorrow afternoon or, or the Thursday afternoon so we can kind of get this thing taken care of and we can get you moving on your way and the people can get the life insurance papers together and so forth? Nah, man, man, we ain't rescheduling. Man, I need a second or third opinion on, on that, man. You talking about taking away one of my... I mean, we ain't rescheduling nothing, man. I'm gonna need to see another doctor, man. That's some sir, sir, you can go around the entire city and see several doctors. I'm here to tell you, you're just gonna be wasting time. I'm gonna try to knock this thing out for you. Knock, knock it off. I ain't agree. I ain't agreed to nothing. This some man. Y'all just doing this to get money, man. This is 
schedule or nothing, man. I need a second or third opinion. It's brutal. Brian, I tell you, if you come in and let me get this thing taken care of, you know, I have you back, you know, big ball and shot calling before it's all over, you know? Hey, what, what, what the mean, big ball and shot calling, man? I, I told you, man, I ain't, I ain't going in for none of that, man. I'm supposed to tell my wife, man, this, this ain't cool, man. I ain't going in for that, man. I'm rescheduling, man. You rescheduling? You, what do you mean you're rescheduling, sir? What we, man, I'm, getting, I'm getting another opinion. I ain't going in for that. Okay, but I'm trying to make you a big baller, shot caller, you know? Man, what the what is your name, man? You supposed to be a doctor. You even making little jokes, man. You doing a little play on words, man. That ain't even funny, man. I'm calling the insurance party and telling them they send me to a doctor, man. Man, you think you're funny. It ain't, it ain't funny, man. You over here making little jokes, man. That ain't funny, man. I'm getting we, taking a pain, man. After getting all funny. of the work that we got, the blood work, the urine work, the complete physical, that's when we didn't realize that you had parasites in a particular area. So what we're trying, I'm not, I don't mean, I'm trying to make light of, make humor in it just to make you feel a little bit more comfortable. I apologize. All right? Man, that ain't funny, uh, man. You ain't the one losing no <laughs> Man, that ain't funny, man. If I had a situation, the nurse would have told me then. Y'all ain't tell me nothing, man. You had me thinking I'm all good. Now you telling me I got to come in to remove a uh, testicle, man. <laughs> We had to run tests on you, sir. We got tests back. Well, you do have the parasites, and what we want to do is make sure we can completely clear it out. The only way I can clear that out is to remove that testicle. you, man. This some man. I ain't got no parasites, man. This man, y'all be running all these tests on me, man. I'm going to another doctor, man, because this man. I ain't got no parasites, man. All these tests y'all talking about, y'all running me. I got to remove a that, That's some you over here making jokes. That's why I know you a doctor, man. I ain't got no Man. I'm calling my insurance. I'm telling them I ain't dealing with your man because you man. I ain't got no parasites, man. Brian, let me make you understand something clearly here. It's my job as a physician that if the patient doesn't come to me, it's my job to come to you and extract the problem. You're leaning towards me having to come to your home and extract the problem. Man, what you want to come to my whole house, man? You a I want you want to step with the house, man. Try to test this, man. You a you. I'm going to another doctor, I'm getting another test, and they go, I ain't got no parasites, man. It's sir, you got the parasites, and you only have 24 hours for me to get you. I ain't got Sir, I have to move on this quickly, Brian, okay? Dude, I'm not going to tell you that again. I ain't got I ain't got no parasites, man. I've been with my girl three years. She ain't got no I ain't got no parasites, man. It's not something that's transmitted. It doesn't come from another another human being. It just develops in one out of every three or four million people. You actually have it, Brian. I got to extract it from you. You trying to tell me I'm the one out of three million? Of man, you know, don't come to my life like that. I ain't got no parasites, man. Brian, there's something else that you have that I haven't told you about. There's something else I need to tell you. What the I got? You just told me I got parasites. What the Else do I got? Brian, you just got pranked. You just got pranked by nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife Anika got me to prank phone call you. I be <laughs> man. <I'm laughs> Let everybody say all right. All right. Ain't nobody all right. saying that. All right, man. That's right. something you don't need to why, hear. Why? Why y'all ain't with me? You know, y'all, sometimes you're with parasites. me, sometimes you're not. Play too much Stay with your boy. <laughs> parasites, you know? You know, you're 25. I know you, you're young, but yeah, yeah we're going we gonna to we gonna have to remove one of them. We're going to have to remove uh, one of them. you got to check both of them when you hear that. you got to check them. <laughs> <laughs> can't just have one check. Well, he said he needed a second opinion, thank God. <laughs> And that's the way it goes. Go to thomasmiles.com and <clears throat> click on the prank button. Leave me all of the information of what you want to do. I call you, we talk, and then I call the person that you want me to prank. It's that simple. That's how it works out. thomasmiles.com. I will prank anybody in your life. Anybody Thank you, nephew. Well. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending news from Georgia, the prosecution in the Ahmad Arbery case made some distressing allegations during the hearing yesterday in Georgia. A Georgia Bureau of Investigations agent testified that William Bryan, the man who filmed the shooting, told him that Travis McMichael had called Mr. Arbery the N-word after, after killing him. Bryan 
Travis McMichael and his father, Gregory McMichael, are all charged with murder. The prosecution uh. also presented evidence that before the shooting, the McMichaels chased Mr. Arbery, Arbery in their truck, trying to corner him and ultimately hitting him hard enough to leave a dent. Lawyers for all three defendants maintain their innocence, saying media accounts provide an incompetent narrative, while a judge has ruled that there's enough evidence to try all suspects with murder. You know wow. what uh, I hate about defense attorneys sometimes? When you know your client is guilty and you still try to get them off, that's, now, that's like amazing that's to me. I know job. that's your job, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's a hell of a job to know a person is guilty and do everything in your power to get them off. I mean, look, man, at Johnny one Cochran. point in time, Johnny Cochran. I would Johnny. just be like, damn, my man, what? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, who's surprised that, that they shot him and called him the N-word? That's Absolutely. why they shot him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. exactly. Yeah. They was thinking it. That's why they shot him. <laughs> so that, so yeah. when the DA released that information, I wasn't surprised at all. Nah. Yeah. Mm. Nah. Yeah. This nah, I wasn't so either. Cool. They made sure he was dead first before they said it, though. Yeah, they killed him. Wow. Yeah. They killed him. They killed wow. him in cold blood. Hunted him Senseless. down. Yeah. Senseless. But, but but the defense's job truly is not to believe or whatever if you're guilty or innocent. They it's just to have to do their up. job to defend you. Mm -hmm. That's why I brought up uh, Johnny Cochran. And it's up to the, the prosecution, to the burden of proof. They have to prove. Yeah. They, they have the hardest work to prove, mm -hmm. and I guess that's what's mm -hmm. going on with the uh, but, George Floyd case, case But as well. thus, mm -hmm. thus is the flaw in our system. Oh, yeah. I because think I'm not an attorney, so I don't know. No, I'm just that. saying, mm -hmm. no, right, what you're no, saying no, is mind. absolutely correct. Okay. But that's the flaw in our system because the burden of proof is different for people of color. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, everything it's a lot is less. For people of color. Yeah, everything. Yeah. It's a lot. Ain't no burden of proof. Just what you say? Okay. Black. <laughs> Lock him yeah. up. You lying. He did him. what? Kill him. I'll be damned. Mm -hmm. And guess did why we, we know he did it? It's because they do the background. It's it's crazy, man. It's, it's like, you know, sometimes I watch 48 hours, and when they get a suspect, every police officer, they pulls up his record, they go, he has a previous arrest record, mm -hmm. and they go, okay, cool. Then he's capable of doing this doing next it. crime. Mm -hmm. Oh, the first and, 48. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh. See, man, so once you become black, they mm -hmm. just assume without yeah. the police record, you're capable of this crime mm -hmm. simply Impossible. because of the color of your yeah. skin. Jesus, man. Yeah. yeah. That's hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. He, here's a little good news, guys. Kanye West has reportedly set up a college fund for George Floyd's daughter, Gianna, and donated $2 million to the families and legal teams of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. That's cool. Right. Thank That's you. real cool. Right, man. Really yeah. That's uh, real cool. Be yeah. it, Kanye. I bet Kim had a lot to do with that, too, because she's so big on prison reform and all of that. Um, and Steve, now it's time for headlines. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, everybody. This is Ann Tripp, and uh, here is the news. A memorial service was held in Minneapolis yesterday for 46-year-old George Floyd. Hundreds of mourners attended. That included family, friends, politicians, and celebrities. The service was held in a chapel at a local university, and the Reverend Al Sharpton gave the eulogy. Get your rest, George. You changed the world, George. We're going to keep marching, George. We're going to keep fighting, George. We done turn the clock, George. We're going forward, George. Time out. Time out! Time out! Right after the eulogy, the crowd observed eight minutes of silence. That's about the amount of time that Derek Chauvin grinded his knee into Floyd's neck. Meanwhile, a lot of people waited outside because of social distancing. People from all over the country, they couldn't get in. So, you know, they, only had, they could only let about half of the regular number that the chapel would hold in. And there were many, many more than that. Tomorrow, there's to be another memorial service in North Carolina. That's where Mr. Floyd was born. And next week, the funeral and burial is scheduled to take place in Houston, which is where George Floyd was raised and where most of his family lives. By the way, the Reverend Sharpton is organizing a march uh, in Washington on August 28th 
to, quote, restore and recommit to the dream. It's going to be the 57th anniversary of the historic March on Washington. Again, Reverend Al organizing a march August 28th on Washington. U.S. Attorney General William Barr spoke about the Floyd case yesterday, providing an update on what the federal government's response is going to be. According to Barr, the country's facing two problems right now. One is its police misconduct and racism. Well, the vast majority of police officers do their job bravely and righteously. It is undeniable that many African Americans lacked confidence in our American criminal justice system. This must change. Uh, yeah, he says the other problem is violent protest. The U.S. Justice Department opened its own investigation to George Floyd's case to see if his civil rights were violated. Problem is, the Justice Department under this administration has walked away from the tools it has to reform scandal-ridden police departments. There are now protest marches and memorials in other cities for other black men and women murdered by police. In Georgia, a judge in Brunswick decided that there is enough evidence for prosecutors to pursue murder charges against the three white men in the murder of an innocent black jogger named Ahmed Arbery. Turns out that the alleged shooter, Travis McMichael, allegedly kept shouting the N-word at Arbery after shooting him three times. Despite some civil unrest and concerns over a number of coronavirus cases, the city of Chicago, sticking to its original plan, beginning to reopen various businesses there. And actor Nick Cannon says that his children, three of them, all three of them, are afraid of the police. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, we're going to try to make people laugh during this segment with another quick, fast round of Ask the CLO. Uh, please submit your questions to okay, Steve Okay, so do you FM. want me to go com. for laughter answers or help people? Give it to me now. Well, they, they were not I mean, can you people. do both? You, you do that all the time. Yeah, quit helping people. All right, here we go. Are Let's you go. asking them? I thought you were asking me. I was asking you for what <laughs> you already you know how that you. goes. Them yeah. Right there. Let's go, Shirley. You here it is. Them? All right, this all right one is from, answers. Here we go. This, this, is, this, one, <laughs> this one is from Thank Lisa you. in Oklahoma. I'm a 23-year-old woman. I recently got married a week after my virtual college graduation. My husband and I were virgins when we got married, but we love making love now. I just have one problem. My husband loves to have sex early in the morning. That was great during quarantine, but now I'm back at work and the sex makes me late for work. I heard about doing quickies, but my husband can't do those. I'm new to all of this, so how do I tell him no when he wants sex in the morning? He don't really want sex in the morning. What? Mm. What do yeah. you want, though? What's it's just mean, a natural though? occurrence in the morning. That ain't sex. <laughs> That's just early morning. It happens. We just up. We yeah. up. We up. Out we, up. <laughs> we up. You up. I'm up. We up. What we going to do? And he don't really want sex. He don't know yet because if you say he was a virgin, which yeah, I doubt. Yeah, they're 23. Yeah, well, he wasn't. But anyway. <laughs> uh you know, lined up. Uh, <laughs> what boy? <laughs> no, listen to me. That ain't that ain't no problem. Y'all having sex and can't go to work on time. That ain't no damn problem. She, she twenty three. Late for work. That ain't no problem. Say uh, no. It's your body. What is we tripping for? He but he can't say no to his body though. It's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> it's a routine. It's an early bro. morning occurrence that happens with men up to a certain age, and he can't help it. Just get your <laughs> ass up before he up and go to work. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose your job early, before he up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Next Tara question, in Atlanta Shirley. says, I'm a 29-year-old female. My boyfriend is 32. We've been together three years. He's changed over the years, and he's a lot less sociable now. Uh, he says he's in love with me, but I don't feel it. I post pictures of us on my social media pages, but he won't post any pictures of me on or us on his page. He told me he mm. keeps his private life private, but if he hangs out with his female friends, he posts group pictures of them. Am I being too petty, or do you think he has mm. something to hide? Mm. Yeah, he don't care for you no more. Mm. Oh, mm. That's Damn. it. It's been three years of being... Just he's blatant. changed his attitude to change. He don't care for you. And he got female friends he posted, but ain't no pictures of you. Do the math. One and one is two. You ain't in nothing but your picture. That's one. He in all his girlfriend's pictures. And why do he have girlfriends? Mm -hmm. 
Ooh. All right. All right. Come on here now. You helped her. All right. Coming up at 34 <laughs> minutes after the hour, LeBron James calls out Fox News' as Laura Ingram as to why she didn't tell Drew Brees to shut up and dribble. We'll talk about it right after this. LeBron, <laughs> mm. LeBron. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, remember back in 2018 when Fox News host Laura Ingram told LeBron James and Kevin Durant to shut up and dribble? Both LeBron and Kevin, um, you know, she was mad at them for criticizing uh, Mr. Donald Trump back in the day. Take a listen to this. It's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid $100 million a year to bounce a ball. Oh, and LeBron and Kevin, you're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh, oh okay. look what we have here. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. LeBron is wondering where is Laura right now and why she didn't tell Drew Brees to shut up and dribble, but Drew Brees can have an opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting, right. huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, shut up and throw the ball. Ain't none of that. Yeah. 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 Trust me. Drew shut Brees, up and throw. He hadn't said it anyway, so you got that going on. He really wish he hadn't said a damn thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wish yeah. he would have just <laughs> shut up and dribble and <laughs> threw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that's evident in his apology. Uh, Breeze has apologized for his remarks. And, uh, uh, mischaracterizing kneeling during the national anthem, he added that his words lacked awareness and any type of compassion or empathy. He says, I stand with the black community in the fight against systemic racism and racial injustice and police brutality and support the creation of real policy change that will make a difference. Drew is asking for forgiveness. And he did but, another apology after that one, a video. Mm-hmm. This but, time. Yeah, yeah, but is, is, this, like, is this sincere? Oh, well, it, it don't just, matter. It, it well, just fits yeah. it. I mean, how, how, how would you You know, know me? You let stuff but go, no, and I well, get see, that. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, what, what's the relevance? Who is he? He's a football player. He made a statement at a time. Y'all ain't heard worse than this? Listen yeah. to what the president done said. Yeah. What, mm-hmm. Drew Brees is catching more hell for what he say than the president catch for what he say because they won't attack him because he in a locker room with black people. Our president is supposed to be unifying this country. He don't say nothing but divisive stuff. I don't give a damn what Drew Brees say. He yeah. don't he don't even play for the Browns. Let's start. <laughs> That's oh, A. Oh. That's A. <laughs> It all hey, comes back to the Browns. Team, I was trying dog. to follow is, you. Hey, it dog, all coming dog, back to the for Browns. Real. Okay. A, let's start there. <laughs> yeah. B. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, okay let me give you this. What if it was your quarterback? Yeah. What if it was your quarterback? Baker Mayfield? Baker, Baker, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield. What if he, Baker he did this? He can't live in Cleveland. Oh, oh, oh. 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 but the oh. no, the no oh. is struggling right now. What, what but, about the but, the no, but, but the but no the is real, and yes. they got a problem with it, and that's why he's making these apologies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he spoke a out of place, yeah. and he used the wrong time to draw a comparison to the kneeling. Because yeah. you just got bamboozled like everybody else by the president and allowed him to flip the script, and you went along with it. Exactly, exactly. You went along with it, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I tell you what, when he was talking to Yahoo Financial, mm-hmm. I promise you, he had no idea what was about to happen to his age. The backlash. Oh, the backlash. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, no oh. idea. So you damn right he apologized. Yeah. What, what yeah. about the Steve, you should hear Bills Shannon. You should hear Shannon Sharp's response to 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 this guy. It's really, really good. Really good. Mm-hmm. What, what did is you say? Can I play it for you? <laughs> can I can I play it? I don't know nothing about technology. Can I play it? Well then no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know nothing Sorry. about yeah. technology. We'll just find it after the show. And what yeah. were you saying, <laughs> Shirley? Go ahead and look for it, Tommy. You know how you ask somebody, what do you say? Can Oh, can I play it? I don't want to misquote. That's all I'm saying. The, uh, quarterback Was you the listening? Buffalo, the <laughs> quarterback for the Buffalo Bulls, Bills Jr. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He said something about buying guns and on, make them very expensive, only for the elite white people. Who is this, Jr.? Who is he? Jake Fromm. Jake, from Jake Fromm. <laughs> you used you to be the quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs <laughs> yeah. that failed in the draft. 
Oh. His ass, a rookie quarterback, had made this statement. He can't even go to training camp. <laughs> mm. It's well over like that. that. Wow. Oh, they going to lace his ass. Yeah. Wow. All right, coming up next, we're going to switch gears. Nephew Tommy in the building with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, uh, it's my strawberry letter for today. I found out that I married a drunk is the subject. But first, Nephew Tommy is here with today's prank phone call. Four, three, relationship. Four, three. You know, four days with you, dog. Three days with me. You see what I'm saying? Like that, dog. Four, three relationship. Four, four days with you, four. three with me. You ain't got to be with your wife. Crazy. Them days week like that. Four with you, three with me. That's that four, three relationship. That's something I'm trying to get going right here. Watch this prank. Cat dog, let's go. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach Maurice. Yeah, this him. Hey, Maurice, my name, my name is Devin, man. How you doing this evening, brother? Oh, man, I'm kind of sleeping, man. I work at night, nice, bro. What's going on? Who, who, who is this again? This is Devin, man. I talked to your wife, Keisha, the other day. That's that's your wife, right? Yeah, that's my wife. Yeah, I, I talked to your wife. Is she in right now? No, she's not in. She at work, bro. Okay, okay. I, I apologize, man. I didn't mean to wake you up. You work at night or something? Yeah, I'm a crane operator at night, bro. A lot of people don't call me until 3 o'clock. You know, what's this? What is it? What is it? What is it? A beer collector or something? No, 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 no. I talked to your wife, man. She's interested in um this thing we got, man, called a 4-3 relationship. She told me she wanted me to call back and talk to her husband about it. And uh, she gave me the number to hit you up at the house, man, and l- let you know all about the 4-3 relationship because she's real interested in it. A 4-3 relationship. You say you talked to my wife about it? Yeah, I talked to Keisha a couple of days ago. She gave me the number. She said, call him back. He'll be at home at this time. You can hit him up and see if he likes it. She said, but she definitely likes it, man, and she wanted to see if you would be interested in a 4-3 relationship, too. You know, we want to get your approval on it before we went any further, but uh, your wife was very excited about it, man. She was uh, wanting to get started as soon as possible, and I wanted to see about contacting you and making sure that you agreed and approved on everything. But she definitely wanted to get your blessing, get your approval on it. Yeah, uh, I'll try to do anything to make her happy, dog, but I got to get some more some more information about this. So what is that again? A, a three, four, four, three? No, no, it's a four, three. A four, three relationship is what it is. Okay, well, if it make her happy, you know, I'm willing to listen. Okay, well, listen, man, we're probably going to get started right away. Uh, probably Monday. We'll get started on Monday. Uh, you'll go through Monday through Thursday, and then uh, and then I'll pick up, you know, Friday through Sunday, man, and we'll go ahead and get this thing started. I think after a month, you'll pretty much catch on to everything, you know? This something going to be shipped to the house or... Uh, uh, pick you say pick up. What you mean pick up? She 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 hasn't mentioned any of this to you. No nah, man, she ain't mentioned nothing this to me. Okay, all right. Well, what this is, man, a four three relationship, uh, Maurice, is this. You know, you spend four days with Keisha, and she comes over to my place, and she spends the other three days with me. That's what a four three relationship. So see, this kind of frees you up, man, on anything you might want to do on those other three days, man, where she might be tying you down. You know, so four of them days, you know, you with her, but the other three days, you kind of have some free time to yourself. But she'll be over at my place on the other three days. That's what a, that's what basically a four three relationship is. Pardon me. Say say what now? I say pardon me. You say she'll spend four days with me, three days with you. That's that's it, sir. That's the four three relationship right there, Maurice. You know, you you really gonna like this, man. Like I say, she was excited about it. Hold on. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious, man. Like I said, Keisha was excited hold about on, it. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, man. I know wife ain't discussed you about relationship, spending four days with me, three days with me, man. So you talking about my wife, oh, boy? No, I, I'm, yeah, no, I know no, it's your no, wife, no, man. you hold up. What's your name again? My name's Devin. Devin. Say, bro, I don't play games, man. I don't know how got my number. What's, what's, I mean, Maurice, what's wrong? I mean, a lot of what couples you, are doing... What mean, what's wrong? That's my wife. Bro, who you think you talking to? You ain't talking to no part. Who you think you talking to? Okay, well, listen, man, a, a lot of couples are doing the 4-3, man. I like, would give a what other couples is doing at home, but my wife and me ain't interested in no 4-3 relationship. I, oh. can't be, I can't believe you want my up for this, man. Are you serious? You calling me talking about... Four three relationship. And you know, I told you I work at night. Why okay, well, 
didn't, I didn't know you that? worked that night, man. Like I said, see, when I came over last week, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You came over well last week. I know you ain't finna say what I thank you for the day. You better not say it. You better not say it. Go ahead. Go ahead, finish. Go ahead. Go ahead, player. You been talking? Don't stop now. Go ahead. No, Maurice, hold up, dog. This, this gets no, no, hold up. You don't. I'm up, player. I'm up. Now, don't say it. Go ahead. No, all, all I'm saying is I came by there last you came, week, man. You came by where? I came by your house. You come by my house. Okay, are you at 18 for trail? Get by been here for the last 10 years. Oh, so you mean you bought your house? Okay, no, because because she said. Okay, she said. I didn't call Tisha right now, cause this first, man. First of all, you don't want stuff, but you gonna tell me you been in my house? Okay, player. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, if y'all not interested in the four three man, then I won't. I won't be wasting them no more. You time. always time. You really are. You waste time calling me with my little wife. Don't tell you about. She want a four three. She never told me nothing about. Player, you got the wrong on home boy. Ain't nothing wrong my relationship. Okay, okay. So why would she tell me she interested in the four three man? I wouldn't give a what she told you. I know I take care of my bedroom. All right, four three. I wish she would leave. Three days. I wish she would. Anyway, I know you. How do you know us? I don't know you for man and fool. I don't mind taking off work tonight to sell to what the going on in my house when my train at night working all night. Now I'm gonna ask you again. How do you know us? Man, I, I know y'all through Tommy, man. Who is Tommy? Tommy who? Tommy, man. Maurice, nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> this is nephew Tommy, man, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, dog. Your wife Keisha got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> man, you you're talking about the Steve Harvey Show? <laughs> yeah, man. Your nephew Tommy, the little bald head <laughs> that's up there next to Steve, man. I know y'all ain't <laughs> with me, man. I know y'all not <laughs> with me today. Man, if Steve said next to you, tell him. Oh, no. Nah. Why are you why Steve need to be over here? Oh, he can slap the ball out your ball head, you little ball head. <laughs> but you ain't got nothing to do but people, man. I slow down. They she know I got to go to work to the city. She, she told that. me you got to go to work. You work at night, man. All right, all right, Maurice. I'm going to let you go back to sleep, man. But one more thing, dog. Tell me this, man. What is the... <laughs> What's yeah, the baddest, and I mean the baddest. Hey, this real cute to you, ain't it? You, you got jokes, huh? I wish I was there. I wish I was there. You, <laughs> you. Hey, man, what's the baddest radio show in the land, man? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> I know there's some men on this show right now doing COVID-19. They would love a 4-3 right now. Now, you might not be able to say that. 4-3? Oh, I'll take a one, Tommy. Darn, I'll take a seven <laughs> in here. <laughs> just a seven. Just a seven? I'm just telling you, a four oh. three will do it, though. Nice four yeah. three. Four three is mm. right. Yeah, Jay, four days over here, three days over there. Right. Four days yeah, over here. Day, whatever, but I got to get out of there. Three damn days. I'm with you. Got to get out of there. Four three relationship. How many, how many, if, if I started a campaign, how many would be on board with me? On this show? Or just nobody. Well, they would be Girl and Carla, y'all man, what if you did Jay. four days? Nope. You know, dog. No, don't, no, they're no, respectable no. wives and women. No. No. They, okay, they well, not, let me talk to they your not going Steve. over nobody else's house. Would you do four three, Steve? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you can't walk up. No. My wife would kill me. Yeah, you yes. just said. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Jay, yeah, I echo that sentiment exactly. <laughs> Jay, yeah. what you say, Tommy? Your wife has four three, Jay. First of all, Tommy, don't even put that in your mouth that I'm married. Okay, so we can't play that game. <laughs> Let's not play that. Okay. We're not playing okay. that. We got six. Oh, I'm team Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm what not married. I'm, I'm not the division. I can't, I can't <laughs> play like that, man. Don't do that to me. <laughs> you can't play like you was married? All right. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, Junior, look at this as if you weren't met. It's too late. Too. All right, we got, we got to go. Thank you, nephew. Uh, coming up next, Strawberry Letter. I found out that I married a drunk is the subject. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one. (laughs) Right here, right now, today, yeah. (laughs) Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, I found out that I married a drunk. Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband and I got married in January, and I relocated to be with him after the wedding. We dated for two years in a long-distance relationship before we got married. When I moved in with him, I found out he has a split personality. To my surprise, he used cocaine recreationally, and he's a binge drinker. I never saw this side of him when we were dating. The truth came out on our wedding day. He started drinking midday and looked like he was high. At the wedding, his speech was so slurred that no one could understand his vows. He admitted to doing a little cocaine before the wedding. He said it would never happen again, but he said he would not give up alcohol. I do not have a problem with alcohol if he drinks in moderation. When we're home, he will have a few beers that leads to bourbon or or scotch later on. He was moving our, uh, he was mowing our lawn over the weekend and he had a beer in his hand. When he walks my dog, he walks around the neighborhood with the red solo cup full of bourbon. The flip side is that he is an executive at a company and his drinking does not interfere with his job. He's in three civic groups and he's able to have a single glass of scotch at these social events. He chooses to be a sloppy drunk whenever he's with me though. I finally confronted him and asked him about the drinking. He said it's because he got married and it was a big life change. He said he loves me, but when I moved in, His life turned upside down, and he needs time to adjust. How am I supposed to handle this? Should I get this marriage annulled now, or is this just a phase that we can work through? Um, I think, Steve, this is the second time in like two weeks we've had a letter about a functioning alcoholic or something, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, this is a shame, uh, you know, that you've been with him for two years, um, and uh, you just recently found out that your brand new husband is an alcoholic. I, I think if you guys didn't live uh, in a um, so far apart or weren't in a long distance relationship, you probably would have found out found out much sooner because he wouldn't have been able to keep it uh, this long. I mean. I understand, though, you giving him a pass on your wedding day because you could chalk that up to nervousness. You could chalk that up to nervousness. But he does cocaine, too? (laughs) This is a mess right here. It really is. I mean, what sober wife wants to deal with something like this? This is craziness. He needs to commit. I mean, you know, he committed to you in marriage, but what he needs to commit to doing is getting some help and getting some help immediately. This is not a phase he's going through. I don't care how well he, you know, can perform on his job or or in these civic groups. He only has one glass of scotch. This is a deal breaker, okay? This this is not a phase. This is a, a, a deal breaker. Drugs and alcohol have no place in a marriage. They have no place in a marriage. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. You need to make the decision whether you're gonna stay with him or not. If it were me, I would have been gone. I'm just gonna tell you that. Steve? I found out I was married to a drunk. Mm-hmm. <sighs> you relocated after the wedding after you all dated for two years in a long distance relationship. And then when you moved in, you found out he had a split personality. Split personality. Simple explanation for this, you didn't know the man. Like Shirley said, the long distance relationship, you just didn't know the man. You thought you did. And to my surprise, he used cocaine recreationally, and he's a binge drinker. So here, alcoholic and a junkie. Ooh. All at the same time. Oh, we time. have a third junkie this year. Oh, you got everything. <laughs> alcoholic, he a drunk and a junkie. <laughs> I never saw this side of him when we were dating, because you was long distance. But the truth came out on the wedding day, 
He started drinking midday. <laughs> Where well, ain't it till the evening? 4 30, 5 30. But at noon, he was tossing. And we about to find out why. He admitted, he said, you said that he looked a little high. At the wet, excuse me, at the wedding, his speech was so slurred, nobody could understand his vibe. I, the, you're the no. husband now, the drunk like, husband. You, you're the groom. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you, you swear? Uh, the drunk. Promise, girl. yeah. yeah. <laughs> to do my duty, to do my best. Boy, them is Boy Scout vibes. The duty, <laughs> right? <laughs> Boy, he, he doing all other kinds yeah. of vibes. Uh, he doing pledges. <laughs> yeah, pledge allegiance to the flag. <laughs> United States of America. Boy, <laughs> shut up. Demate your way now. And uh, I'm but mad. he said it would never happen again. Now check this out. But he said he would never give up alcohol. So what he meant to say was, I'll never give up drinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what that statement is. Yeah. I don't have a problem with alcohol if he drinks in moderation. In moderation, he can't. Didn't you say he have a solo cup full of liquor walking the dog? That's that red cup. That's a big <laughs> ass cup. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody I see with a red cup is drinking, and they high too. Hang on, Steve. <laughs> we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's strawberry letter. I found out that I married a drunk. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject. Uh, I found out that I married a drunk. Wow. In a long-distance relationship with this man for two years, they finally get married. She relocates, find out that he's a binge drinker and he uses recreational cocaine. (laughs) She didn't know none of this because it was a long-distance relationship. But it came, truth came out at the wedding because around midday at the wedding, he started drinking. Mm-hmm. His speech was so slurred, ain't nobody know what he said, and he couldn't say the vows. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> did several shame. vows, and That's none of shame. them was wedding vows. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> this, this is him at the wedding trying to think of his wild vows. Once upon a midnight dreary. <laughs> As I ponder weak and weary, puzzled by single query, which amongst the Greeks did you? What are you doing? You can't do that. That's that's a fraternity point. What? Stop that. Stop that. Wow. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole. Shut up, that's Invictus. Hey, whatever the gods mean. You ain't supposed to say that, that's Invictus. Your vows, say your vows. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, United oh, States. Yeah. That's the Pledge of Allegiance. I promise to do my duty, to do my best, to God and my country. That's the Boy Scouts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now, the wedding was offered. He promised he never, he admitted he did some cocaine before the wedding. Anyway, he said it never happened again, but he would not give up drinking. Now, she said she ain't got a problem if he drinks in moderation, but we, we got a problem with his idea of moderation. Because when y'all go home, he'll have a few beers that leads to a scotch or a bourbon later on. Mm-hmm. When scotch and bourbon is your chaser, <laughs> your ass is in trouble. That's your nightcap. You're an alcoholic, <laughs> dude. Dog, you have some beers and then later on he'll kill it with some bourbon or scotch. Yeah. You're in trouble. Got major problem. He was mowing our lawn over the weekend. He had a beer in his hand, and when he walks my dog, he walk around the neighborhood with a red solo cup full of bourbon. Mm, mm, mm. The flip side is that he's an executive at a company, and his drinking doesn't interfere with his job. He's in three civic groups, and he's able to have a single glass. Doesn't interfere with his job. He's in three civic groups, and he's able to have a single glass of scotch at those social events. But when he with me, he chooses to be sloppy drunk. Mm. So then she confronted the man. She asked him about the drinking and hear what he said. He said, because when he got married, it was a big life change. And he said he loves me, but when I moved in, his life turned upside down. 
and he need time to adjust. Let me translate this for you. When Please. he married you and his life was no longer his, he has to get toe up to deal with it. Mm-hmm. He got to get full. When he walking y'all funky dog, he got to be high. <laughs> when he cutting y'all's damn grass, he got to be drinking. When he in there watching TV with you, his ass <laughs> got to drink some more. Steve, what did Jay say? What you say? What you say, Jay? Been there. I said, been there. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you cut the yard high, Jay. Yeah. How am I supposed to He's handle talking this? Talking about being in the marriage. <laughs> Should I get this marriage annulled now, or is it just a phase we can work through? No. Lady, this is not a phase. No, it's not a phase. That's Alcoholism a is not a phase. It's a deal breaker. Come on. It's not. No. And let's what? You've married a man that you don't know. Mm-hmm. But guess what? He said he's not going to give up drinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And drinking is a big part of your problem. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't really love this man and you want to get away from it because you might have bitten off more than you could chew, then I suggest you get out now. Because you obviously, yep. being yep. a caretaker is not what you signed up for. Get out. And obviously, your vows, Richard Papoor, sickness and health, all that, you, you ain't really mean that. Sclerosis of the liver. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. You didn't say none of that. You didn't. Right. You didn't want to do. You know. You know none. None of the stuff that come with drinking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I would suggest you get out because yeah. it's not a phase, and he's not going to stop drinking. He's already said it, and you're unhappy with the, that much drinking. And they just and if it. he don't give up the drinking, he probably ain't gonna give up the cocaine. Yeah. And eventually, you he gonna lose his job. That's and in three civic life. groups, whatever the hell that means, that could be our only drug. lady. Just leave. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. I love to tell you to hand that fight for your marriage, but you ain't really in love with this man. You ain't never mentioned that in here. Because your answer to us was, <laughs> she, "Should she I get this thing or no?" Right. Girl, yes. go ahead and do that. That's yes. what your first yes. mind yes. tells you. Mm-hmm. You tripping? You done moved your job up there. He just drinking his ass off. Let me ask you, Steve. Would you Him marry, and the dog. hypothetically, would you marry a woman that was a drunk and did Hell cocaine? Hell no. And I, thank you. I'm this having a hard right. enough time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing just, I need is your ass I talking to me drunk. <laughs> I don't even want like talking all the time sober. <laughs> I really can't handle a woman talking to me drunk. Y'all already talk too damn much. Now. You're talking, and it don't make no damn sense. Uh-uh. Let, let me ask. Uh, let no, me ask. I'm not marrying a woman that drinks. Thank you. So she Heavily or no yeah. other kind of way. Right. All right, listen. Uh, post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at steveharveyfm.com. That's on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget to check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we'll tell you about certain Confederate monuments coming down wow. right after after this. That's good news. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Another sign of positive change, guys. A couple of Confederate monuments are about to come down. A huge statue of General Robert E. Lee in Richmond, Virginia. That is going to be removed as soon as possible. Uh, That's according to Governor Ralph Northam. Richmond was the capital of the Confederacy during the Civil War. The statue, which sits on top of a massive pedestal, will be placed in storage until authorities figure out what to do with it. So that's really good news. Give it to the protesters. Mm -hmm. (laughs) See what they'll do with it. (laughs) Oh, they're going to burn it. (laughs) And change some of these racist flags that they have, too. Like the one in, uh, in, is it Birmingham? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Change that. They have it's to very start simple. Doing change, making change. You have to like get this. rid of all symbols of hatred. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Just start mm-hmm. with that. It's real simple. Mm-hmm. Who is going to care except them hillbillies that that statue of what's his name? Robert, Robert e. Lee. General Robert, Robert e. Lee. Who gives a damn? Hey, man, have y'all ever been to Stone Mountain in Atlanta? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. And yes. seen cool that uh, laser show that they do yeah. at the window. Yeah, he of the rides night. across the mountain. Yeah, get rid of hey, that man, too. let me tell you something, man. <laughs> yeah. I got my family up out of there so fast. I said, yeah. hey, y'all pack all this stuff up. But she said, Steve, what's wrong? Because my kids, you know, they, my it's kids Atlanta, know what's happening. They was going, wait a minute. What, what are they trying right, to say right. here? Mm-hmm. What was it? And, dog, and, and, man, they show a laser show at the end of the night. They do fireworks and they do this laser show. 
and they show it on Stone Mountain, and it's in lasers. And it's very elaborate, man. Mm -hmm. And they go over history of, like, America and the South. Mm -hmm. And this Robert E. Lee and come riding through with the with Stonewall the, and all them. Stonewall games. with the Confederate flag Jackson. and them hillbillies stand up. <laughs> Woo! They start the howling and stuff. rise they again. Yeah, they, 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 I'm they packing my stuff up, dog. We was in that sprinter so fast. Because <laughs> you do Woo! I said, because I, I, know, I, know, I know when hillbillies start hollering like that, we got to get our black ass <laughs> towards something. Because look, man, I got, I got my family with me, all of them. Mm-hmm. I said, man, I'm gonna have to whoop somebody ass out here, mm. cause I'm 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 not gonna let you do my family. And you know my sons and stuff, they grow. No, nah, Dad, we ain't got to go nowhere. I'm just going. No, nah, it ain't enough for us. Let's go. <laughs> we're Let's go. outnumbered. I, I, I appreciate yeah. the bravery, but we're gonna yeah. get out here and we're gonna live because we ain't coming down here no more. Yeah. But it's stuff the like that most that racist stop. exhibit I've ever seen. Yeah, wow, that's so got to go. I saw that. It's right outside of Atlanta. You're right. Mm. Mm. And well, clapping. What is the black people clapping for? Did you see that? <laughs> and then while you at it, how about you go down all south right. and change all those plantation names? Take that away, too. Where yeah. everything mm-hmm. is named plantation. All right, we got to go, guys. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll talk about uh, the NBA's return to play right after this. You happy, Junior? Yes! <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Junior, what is going on? So the NBA is finally coming back? What's happening? Yes. Yes, Shirley. Yes. <laughs> Fellas, we got some basketball. So happy. Yes. All we right. will have live sports that we understand. Because I'm tired of this cornhole throwing thing they got. <laughs> what what I, is that? I've watched that so many I, times. Junior, I've been Junior. watching that. I, I got one. God, Tommy, Tom, J- huh? Junior, I've been watching that and Axe throwing. <laughs> I'm scared of, I'm scared of the Axe throwing, but mind. I got the... I got the cornhole little setup. I got that. Dog, them boys can throw them damn axes. Have you seen darts? Have you seen the darts? Darts is serious, man. Yeah, they serious with that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, So So NBA coming back, man. That's what you guys watch. Yeah, they got NBA coming back. It's uh, uh, 22 teams coming back on July 31st. uh, October. Yeah, July 31st, they're going to have the... uh, the uh, playoffs before the finals going to be before October 12th. So we got 22 so teams. So they're huh? finishing this season. Yes. They're going to finish this season, big dog. They're going to have um, in the East is going to be uh, Milwaukee, Toronto, Boston, Miami, Indiana. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. They just coming back and do playoffs? Playoffs. Yeah, That's 22 right. teams. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. 22 teams is in the playoffs? No, no, they're going to have like a little CD system. That's what they're going to do. They're going to play. The, they're going to take their record. They're going to play eight games. They're going to add it to their record. That's going to decide who's going to be seeded oh. for the playoffs. So it's only 22 It's only twenty two teams coming back. The whole league not coming back. Like they, ain't, they didn't even call Memphis. They ain't say nothing about Memphis. So if you had a bad season, come on Knicks. back. You're not the Knicks. Yeah. Call, they, huh? did, they didn't even did waste they, time did they, calling the Knicks. They, just, they didn't even let them play. They didn't even ask so junior, them. Junior, junior, did they some call teams Cleveland? not getting a call at all. Huh? Yeah, some cities, they're not even calling, Jay. They didn't even call. So, so oh, are no, they, they calling they to say, did y'all call us? Are they? <laughs> yeah, they calling back. No. <laughs> Is Cleveland in there 22? Uh, let me see. Cleveland, 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 you Cleveland. You see Cleveland in the 22. Cleveland. Nope, they didn't get a call. Cleveland not yeah. in the 22. Well, he, they not in the 22. Hello, like this is Brown. Cleveland. Uh, I noticed you mm-hmm. made some calls. Did y'all call us? Because we get away from the phone. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the Cavaliers. And, the Cavaliers. Yeah, the Cavaliers, they didn't, they didn't get a call. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, no. All right, just mm-hmm. checking. Yeah, Listen, didn't, we didn't click didn't. over earlier. Was that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't. What about the Grizzlies? The Grizzlies, the Memphis Grizzlies, today. Grizzlies, no, no, Grizzlies, no call. No call Hello? for the Grizzlies. Hello? Hello? Hello. Uh, yeah. Houston, this is Roger Goodell. Uh, That's listen. NFL. That's NFL. NFL. Yeah, this Boy. is Roger Goodell. This is Houston. We want to talk about the sudden rash of of uh, trades that you all have made. Oh, look at him. Uh-huh. And I see you, man. your draft picks for the upcoming the year. Were yeah, you all you planning on winning any games this year? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? No. no. <sighs> Hello, Houston. Oh, Hello. Oh, we we have a there. problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, would y'all please? 
y'all please call Cleveland so they can play so Uncle Lee was alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, who is going to pack that part? Who huh? you got? Who you got on your list? Oh, here, we see. We got, uh, we got, we, like I said, we got the Nets. We got Orlando. Uh, we got uh, Washington. And then we got the Lakers, the Clippers, Denver, Utah. Washington Oakland. ain't going to make it. <laughs> Houston playing. Dallas playing. And uh, Portland. Dallas New ain't going to make it either. Sacramento, San Antonio, Mark the Phoenix New Suns. Orleans. Come on, man. Y'all for real? Yeah, they got a call. They got for real? 20, oh. 22 teams. <laughs> Who'd you hate? Cleveland. Drew Brees don't play Cle- for them. <laughs> they, That's Zion. They can't be in it. <laughs> I'm just glad they got some basketball back home. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now, will it be uh, people wait, in wait the stands, minute. Jim? For real? No, the, nobody. Wait a minute, man. Uh, the Grizzlies didn't get the call to play? Yeah, they did. They did. They did. Yeah, yeah I was finna say because they had a yeah. little bit better record than New Orleans. They did. Yeah, they did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You didn't say Golden State, huh? No, they didn't get the call, though. No, no dog, they ain't got nobody. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't nobody. Ain't nobody playing in Golden State. They ain't gonna play in Golden State. Who playing? <laughs> wow. You don't Green? Even know who playing? Mark Freely. He on the team. That's it. <laughs> That's all we got. Wow. We got but we got basketball. Wow. It's back. Well, thank you, Jerry. In Orlando. <laughs> Coming up, more music, more trending topics, and some headlines at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Say her name. Say her name. Today would have been the 27th birthday of Breonna Taylor, the black woman killed by Louisville police in a botched no-knock warrant back in March. In honor of Breonna Taylor's birthday today, please sign the official petition calling for justice and send a birthday card to the Kentucky Attorney General demanding that he bring about uh, charges against the officers who killed her. The most underserved demographic in America is black women. We will not let them forget Breonna Taylor. Say Mm. her name. Yeah. Wow. This is a big movement today. They're yeah. asking mm-hmm. everyone. To so you can address it. you can address your cards to the office of the Attorney General, 700 Capitol Avenue, Suite 118. That's in Frankfurt, F R A N K F O R T, Kentucky, 40601. 40601 3449. Or Come you can on, go to Steve Harvey yes. FM to get that information, right? That's right, Steve. Okay. That's right. Mm-hmm. You in good old boy yeah. country now, nah, partner. Yeah. Oof. But we still got more work to do. Yeah, we yeah. do. We yeah. really, really do. Yeah. That was Dang. such a tragedy. <clears throat> so, again, Office of the Attorney General, 700 Capitol Avenue, Suite 118. That's in Frankfort, Kentucky, 40601. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Okay, remember back in 2018 when Fox News host Laura Ingram told LeBron James and Kevin Durant to shut up and dribble? Both LeBron and Kevin, um, you know, she was mad at them for criticizing uh, Mr. Donald Trump back in the day. Take a listen to this. It's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid a hundred million dollars a year to bounce a ball. Oh, and LeBron and Kevin, you're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. Oh, 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 oh okay. Oh, oh okay. look what we have here. Mm-hmm. Well. LeBron is wondering where is Laura right now and why she didn't tell Drew Brees to shut up and dribble. But Drew Brees can have an opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting, mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, shut up and throw the ball. Ain't none of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brees has apologized for his remarks and uh, uh, mischaracterizing kneeling during the national anthem. He added that his words lacked awareness and any type of compassion or empathy. He says, I stand with the black community in the fight against systemic racism and racial injustice and police brutality and support the creation of real policy change that will make a difference. Drew is asking for forgiveness. And he did but, another apology after that one, a video. This but, time. Yeah, you but know, is, this, like, is this sincere? What's the relevance? Who is he? He's a football player. He made a statement at a time. Y'all ain't heard worse than this? 
Listen yeah. to what the president done said. Yeah. What, Drew Brees is catching more hell for what he say than the president catch for what he say because they won't attack him because he in a locker room with black people. Our president is supposed to be unifying this country. He don't say nothing but divisive stuff. I don't give a damn what Drew Brees say. He don't, he don't even play for the Browns. Let's start. <laughs> that's oh, A. Oh. That's A. <laughs> Get all hey, the way back to the Browns. Team, I was dog. trying to follow you. <laughs> hey, dog, all coming no, back to the for Browns. Real. Okay. A, let's start there. <laughs> yeah. B, okay, 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 okay. Well, okay, let me give you this. What if it was your quarterback? Yeah. What if it was your quarterback? Baker that's Mayfield? Baker. Baker Mayfield. Mayfield. What if he, Baker he did can, this? He can't live in Cleveland. Oh, 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 but the no. 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 is struggling right now. What, what but, about the but, but, but the but the is real, and yes. they got a problem with it, and that's why he's making these apologies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he spoke out of place, yeah. and he used the wrong time to draw a comparison to the kneeling. Because you just got bamboozled like everybody else by the president and allowed him to flip the script, and you went along with it. Exactly. Coming up, it's our last break of the day. No justice, no peace. It is the last break of the day. I'm going hard. I'm going serious now, man. That was pretty good. good. Yeah, it was. And we'll have, of course, some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, last break of the day on this Friday. And, uh, Jay, before we got out of here, get out of here and before Steve gets to the closing remarks, you wanted to make an announcement? You wanted to do a I'd shout I'd like out? to make an announcement. Today mm-hmm. is my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Terrell. Happy birthday. You are way past the age where you get a gift, okay? Way <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> way. Don't expect a damn thing but a happy birthday. Aww. Second shout out is to my grandson Morgan, voted the number one player at age 13 in basketball in Columbia, South Carolina. The number Aww. one player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number one player. Yes. Go, Jay. Damn, show you get that money from right his there. granddaddy. Yes, I love you. I'm happy, man. The boy oh, got man. skills. <laughs> it's been a week, sir. Uh-huh. It's been uh, two a weeks, week. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And weeks. we're still going It's been a year. It. Yeah, protesters are still out year. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. the good news is that but the people the protesters the are out. Let know. Yeah, they're not. And this they want to see year change. Of change maybe. Yeah, they want to see it. change. Yeah. Mm hmm. 2020. Yep. Yep. Maybe so. Rest in peace, peace, George Floyd. Um. Wow. Just a lot going mm. on. A lot going yeah, on a lot. in America. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a lot. It's a mm-hmm. lot. So we done with Corona? Are we done? <laughs> it's half time, Junior. I told y'all it's half time. <laughs> oh, is that what this you what said? You it's half time. <laughs> Yeah, well, you get to Anthony go to the bathroom. Fauci is get some, you get to get refreshments and all that right yeah. now. It's halftime. Yeah. I, I mean, it's still out there. I mean, you still have to wash your hands and be careful and wear masks and everything. Uh, it's but not isn't it over. a trip? Isn't it a trip? This ain't heard nothing about it. That's all. Yeah. We ain't heard nothing. We had a, what, a month ago, it was a screen every, every five day. seconds. Mm-hmm. Every we, day. we had a, a count on who, lo- who we lost. And it, it, now well, it's not. Trump don't gone. want those numbers yeah. out. Out there, no. you don't want that. Yeah. Homo was giving that. us an update in New York yeah, every he day. Don't want that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the guy From his basement. So was the president. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Governor yeah. Cuomo was giving us an update every day, 11 o'clock. I get mm-hmm. it. I know. We ain't seen mm-hmm. that in two weeks. Cuomo's yeah. still out there, huh? Cuomo's yeah, he still, still does there. updates. Mm-hmm. And Anthony I... Fauci, Dr. Fauci, is talking about schools could possibly reopen in the fall. Yeah. Wow, th- which is all great, well, news. great news. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. what we want to, to for things to get back to normal, you know, as soon as possible. A lot of parents still out on say, you know, <laughs> when is Magic though. City going to open back up? That's <laughs> what we need to know. Yeah, yeah, now that's you. important. Yeah. Yeah. That's really? important. Magic when you City. get to talking about things that's important, yeah. I'm with you, Jay. Right before that's the important. closing <laughs> remarks, guys. And I'm going to tell you huh? right now, it's going to be packed too, Jay, when they open back up. Oh, that first day? <laughs> <laughs> For the ch- 
chicken wings right for the chicken wings. Yes, right? chicken exactly. Wings. Uh-huh. I mean, that's, that's why, why we go in there. Yeah. All right, let's go, guys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck following this foolishness. Well, you know, uh, let me do this for closing. It's been a week for all of us. Um, everybody uh, is sort of the first time I've seen around the world we all dealing with the same thing. First, it was COVID-19. We were all dealing with it. And now, thank God for video, we are now all dealing with and facing the realities of the justice system here in America. I want the young protesters, I'm going to just say a few things here. I want you all to be smart out there now. I want you to protest, and I agree with your protest 100%. The reason you are out there is just. The reason you are out there is the same reason Colin Kaepernick got on his knees. It's, it's the real reason. Now, because they are expert at drawing and diverting attention from the original cause of the protest, especially when it's people, uh, especially when it's peaceful, they've learned how to infiltrate your protest, incite the riot, start the looting and the burning, and then the angry catch on with it and it becomes something else. We can't let them do that to us. We can't hustle backwards, y'all. We got to stay out in front of this thing. Don't lose sight of the mission. The mission is so the Aubreys and the Floyd's lives are not in vain, that they garner the right amount of attention. I'm just using those two. There are so, so, so many more. Sad to say, but so many more. Be appreciative of the non-African Americans who have decided to join in with the fight. I know the conversation is what took them so long and blah, 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 blah. It don't matter. The, The timing is now. Don't get hooked up on what didn't happen or how long it took to happen. Let's take advantage of the fact that something is happening. Now, the problem that I have with people sometimes, see, some people think that if they're not affected by racism, then it don't exist. It does exist. Some people treat justice like it's pie. I heard Laura Coates say this on CNN. She said some people treat justice like it's pie, meaning where if I get some, you get less. No. (laughs) Justice is supposed to be for everybody in equal doses and amounts. If you think Because black people ain't slaves no more and we free and we ought to be satisfied. That's a mistake. And last but not least, to Drew Brees. We would love to put our hands over our hearts and feel the exact same way you feel about that flag. But that flag has done us a little bit different. So we don't tear up when we see the flag. We do wish that flag meant the same thing to us that it means to you, and it represented it and upheld the Constitution for us the same way it does for you. That's what we wish for the flag. We don't desecrate the flag. We don't burn it. But just know that the whole time y'all singing the song, we just hoping the song would include us. Those are my closing remarks. Have a great weekend, everybody. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 